this tutorial, I'd like to show you Majimoto. Majimoto is an animation tool that provides an easy-to-use method to create animations using a simple paradigm of three points of animation. Majimoto is a powerful plugin that is available for After Effects, Final Cut Pro 7, Motion, and Final Cut Pro 10, and it can be downloaded from our website in a trial mode. Let's take a look at some of what we can achieve when using Majimoto. I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, and Majimoto has been enhanced to work in a very unique fashion in this application. We can find Majimoto in several places, in the Effects Browser, in the Transitions Browser, in the Titles Browser, or if you prefer, you can access all of the Majimoto elements in one single place by selecting the Themes Browser and scrolling down to the Majimoto theme. If you notice, Majimoto offers similar elements for titles, effects, and transitions. This means that you have an additional flexibility to decide where and how you can use Majimoto in your editing timeline. I have an edit in the timeline right now, and I will be showing you how to set up a title. I like the animation of the title element called Change Slides 01, but after looking at some of the other elements, I think I like the round corners. Well, I'm going to use the first one and then customize the frame shape later. By default, this element is 5 seconds long, and I think I need to reduce the duration to 3 seconds by pressing the Control key and the letter D in my keyboard to enable the typing of 3 seconds exactly. Also, because this is my first title in the edit, I don't see the need to use the built-in animation option. I'm going to turn off this option so the framed video is in the landing position when the edit starts. Perfect. Now, to customize the look of my title, I'm going to select the curved frame that I liked. In the section of the frame parameters, I can choose from several styles, and I know that the curved frame is the one I'm looking for. I can customize the color of the frame to match the color of the cable car to add emphasis to my visuals, and maybe adjust the color a little bit so it is just the way I want it. I can try the several blending modes available to see which one looks better. I think the overlay mode looks the best for this setup. If I stop for a moment and look at the first frame of my title, I see a ghosting image of the frame that is dissolving in, so I need to lower the dissolve value to get rid of that and still be able to dissolve the frame out when the video layer flips around and out at the end of the title. Let's change it from the default of 30 to a lower value, let's say something like 5. You could also use your own designed frame and mat. And that's what these drop zones are here in the parameters. If you plan to use your own frame image, just make sure that you select the user option when selecting the frame. The next section is for the title and label. For the title, I want to use both the text and the label strip under the text. Make sure to leave this button and the label button enabled. To edit the text, I can do it in the parameter box or by clicking on the Edit Title button in the preview window. And for the font, I want it to be very modern and clean and increase the size of the title slightly to about 50. I can see that the label strip under the text needs to go darker. I'll change its color to black and leave the intensity to 0.4. Now for the background, I want to have a more neutral color, like a warm gray, and customize the gradient. Some elements have an optional parameter at the bottom, and this element has a slider. By moving this parameter, I can see that this element has the option to adjust the inclination of the layer in the landing or hero position. I think I like it in this position better. Okay, I'm ready to play back this section. Nice! I really like it. Now, for my first transition, I already know which one I want to use. Scroll to the transition elements and find the one called Force and Bounce. This one has a different frame, but I will customize it with the curved frame to have some continuity with the title. The default duration is one second, and I'm going to change it to be one second and a half by pressing the Control D keyboard command and typing my new duration. 
and I'm going to have to bring the same colors that I used in the title into this element to maintain the overall color scheme. And now, I need to select the curved frame in the Frame drop-down menu and set the blending mode to overlay. Great! I think that looks just perfect. Now I'm going to use the same transition for the rest of my edits, so I need to duplicate it. For the next segment, I have a video clip on top of my main storyline. And in this case, I'm going to use a Majimoto effect to have this video clip go across on top of the video layer below. And I know exactly which is the element that I want to use. It's called Double Exposure. And yes, you guessed it. I'm going to customize this element just like I did with the title and the transition. The parameters show me that this element provides an optional text and label if I want to, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. Take a look at the parameters, and you'll see that the Majimoto effects have the parameters set up a little different. There are three parameters at the top of the inspector window to modify the animated behavior of the layer. The time slider controls the speed bias of the animation. So if I move the slider to the lower values, then the beginning will animate a lot faster and the end will be slower. And if the slider is moved to a higher value towards the right, then the beginning animation is slower and the ending speeds up. I'm going to leave it in the middle so it runs with a balanced speed bias. The motion start and the motion end parameters control the behavior of the animation using standard forms of linear or smooth movement combinations. Try them out and see which one works better for the style of animation that you want. As you can see, there are many possibilities when using Majimoto inside Final Cut Pro 10. By using the title elements, adding a transition to the cuts, and applying an effect to one of the clips, I was able to customize and unify the look throughout the entire process. Majimoto can also be used inside Motion 5, where you can create your own templates and publish them to be used in Final Cut Pro 10. Of course, if you don't have Motion, or if you prefer to create your animations in Final Cut Pro 10, Majimoto includes a special effect that was prepared with that purpose in mind. It's called Majimoto FX Designer. This effect provides the essential parameters to create or design your animations right inside Final Cut Pro 10. With Majimoto FX Designer, you'll be able to achieve complex animations in a straightforward and methodical approach, even if animation is not your specialty. My suggestion to you is to give Majimoto a try and check the additional tutorials to see how useful and powerful this animation tool can be. Majimoto is powered by FX Factory, so if you're trying out these effects and would like to get a licensed copy to remove the watermark, just click on the button at the bottom of the preview window to access the online store or to enter the registration code. For more plugins, transitions, or effects from SugarFX, please visit our website at sugareffects.tv.